him warm and used also to protect him from water. Um, now the cloak is plated with grass at a, between two to three centimeters. Uh, so, but yet on every location except the lower part, which would give him full use of his legs and would not hinder him. Um, but the cloak could have also served as a grass mat from which he would sleep on, and it could have also served uh, to hold his um, his book bag. And he had actually had a, a type of bag which he was placed on his back. It could have been the covering for that. And scientists are not yet sure. What was, what was the uh, the cloak made out of? What was the, uh, the, the it was composed of uh, finely stitched grass. Okay, so grass was not only used for material, but for insulation purposes too. Sure, uh, you, that was done in his in his shoes. His the shoes also had insulation. His shoes had grass insulation. Yes. Okay. Um, the majority of his clothing was composed of uh, finely threaded animal sinews, That's animal threads from animal hairs. But as we can see um, in the leggings, we have evidence of grass uh, grass um, grass thread being used in addition to this, which would mean that these repair these were quickly done, hastily done repairs made by the Iceland, Iceman on his journey, the majority of his clothing, it's debatable whether or not he made it uh, himself. It was probably made by someone from his village, and that, that would be evidence of repairs made. The use of so he grass. was in a very challenging environment. Obviously, we're talking about high altitude, uh, the southern uh, Alpine uh, uh, Alp region. Um, this would keep him comfortable, keep him alive through, throughout snowstorms and sub-freezing uh, weather? Sure, it would ensure maximum, uh, it was maximum utility. It would provide him with the mobility he needed to climb and to, to survive in this, in this mountainous area, and it would also provide him with the warmth he needed. How would uh, his um, clothing and equipment compare with like, the, uh, the equipment of uh, modern hikers today? Would, would it compare favorably, unfavorably? Would, would it be very primitive? Or would it be uh, um, uh, uh, just as effective? I would say it's just as effective, and there's some parallels with, with some of this equipment as in the bow. Um, yet, there, there are marked differences. Obviously, uh, someone going out now would not have fashioned their own uh, majority. The majority of his equipment is fashioned by himself. Um, in addition to that, um, his equipment is made from things from the surrounding area and would have made him, he would have been largely self-sufficient. With clothing he had, he would have been suited for a long journey uh, in the mountains and he would have been able to care for himself. Um, also his shoes, the, wasn't it true that there was, uh, the way they were fashioned, that there was a, 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 almost like a shell or a, uh, a net on top? Yes. And the bottom had the, um, a, a type of a hide that had gripping uh, uh, properties? Yes, uh, there was bear, uh, bear skin on the bottom, which would be used to prevent slippage. Uh, and the netting, as you indicated, would be used to hold the shoe frame together, as well as hold in the insulation. He also uh, carried a, a, a fungus, a, a possible use for either medicinal purposes or uh, lighting fires. Could you describe some of the more um, uh, advanced uh, uh, equipment that he carried, just for a survival? Sure. Uh, well, he had two different types of mushrooms. One of the types um, was used for tinder, and that would be found in his belt pouch. Uh, what he would do is he had a um, pyrite was also found. He would either use his flint dagger uh, to hit the pyrite and start a flame, which he would then transfer to the um, to the the tinder, the tinder fungus, which would start a fire. Um, or he could have used other materials to start that fire. Um, with all intents and purposes, he, he began using the fire with the pyrite, which he would then hit with an object to start a, flight, uh, to start a spark. Um, in terms of his other, um, the other thing you mentioned, uh, the other mushroom would have, uh, other mushroom he had, I forget the name, or had served antibiotic, had antibiotical properties and would have served as a primitive medicine kit. So in a way, uh, there, there was uh, the beginning of, uh, of, of being a doctor or being a, a physician or health or, or, or a herbologist or whatever. Oh, well, cer certainly he was aware of the properties of the materials he carried. How about his physical body? Were there any um, uh, markings on his body, any significance to that? Yes, uh, the Iceman has a series of 57 tattoos on the body. And these bo the tattoos are interesting in that they probably were not uh, ceremonial or decorative although there are practices and instances in the Neolithic where they were used as uh, social markers. 
Uh, the majority of his tattoo, or actually all of his tattoos, would have been covered by clothing and thus would not have been visible. Uh, the tattoos are interesting in that they are placed on uh, pressure points within the body and they may have served as primitive form of acupuncture. Um, recent CAT scans and x-rays have revealed that the uh, Iceman suffered from osteoporosis, oste excuse me, osteoporosis, uh, arthritis, and also uh, he, these areas had uh, mid to, medi uh, to medium range um, wear, signs of wear and tear. So uh, they were pretty much used um, for medicinal purposes, therapeutic purposes. And there are parallels with this, uh, with the Scythians, uh, as we'll see uh, many years later, many thousands of years later, in 400 BC, uh, in one grave we find an example of a, a Scythian warlord with uh, the same forms of tattoo on his lower back. Uh, now the tattoos are different from our typical tattoos nowadays. They would be made from uh, cutting an open wound and then placing um, hardened or charcoal. charcoal within the wound. Um, charcoal. He had a backpack, and the interesting thing about that was it wasn't just a backpack. He actually had a, a, a frame. Could you describe uh, this, this frame, which uh, looks very uh, modern? Well, yes. Um, I mean, a backpack is a backpack, right? Uh, the frame uh, was composed of two pieces of new wood, um, and there, though there's not much miss, there's much missing from this frame. Um, people have nowadays uh, theorized that um, his wooden, his uh, grass cloak could have been uh, the covering for this frame. Now he had a dagger uh, in his possession. Yes, uh, the dagger was probably injured. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, destroyed or damaged during the recovery process. Um, with this dagger, he has a finely um, plated grass uh, sheath, which was probably not made by himself. Um, the, f the finger work that would be required would probably have been done by a, a woman, not his, not with his coarse hands. Um, but um, the, the dagger is a flint dagger. Um, it has been revealed from study that it's probably from uh, the Lucini region by um, Lake Garda, which would place this man uh, from the Southern Alps, you know, place him down south. Um, the, the dagger uh, has a loose fit into the sheath, which obviously signify, uh, signifies that um, it would have been, it would, was larger, it would have been a firm, firmer, uh, a firmer fit. Um, and a part of it's missing, obviously, which would conceivably have been missing during the recovery process. And another factor that would make this story even uh, more interesting was uh, dried blood and, uh, from different sources, not from one source found on, on the dagger. Could you uh, tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, well, it's revealed, it's definitely uh, revealed that the Iceman had was in conflict of some sort. Um, now it's debatable what had caused this conflict, with whom, but there are traces, uh, four traces of blood. Now, we don't know if these... With different sources? From different sources. We don't know if this is the blood of animals. Obviously, some of it's human blood, and we cannot determine which is Utsi's and which is, would be his, uh, his attackers. There's traces of blood on his quiver, which I would say uh, would be from his own, would it be from his own blood. The quiver would be hung from his back, and it is conceivable, um, as he fell from the blood loss and fr from the injury in his sh left shoulder blade, the blood came upon that. Um, and this can be confirmed by um, the broken arrowheads, and th which had splintered. Now, flint doesn't uh, splinter easily, and what would have been needed would be a high-impact fall. So that's conceivable that the blood on the arrow, or on his quiver, is from himself. There is also blood on his axe, which I, which may be from animal, he may have hacked the carcass. Uh, it's debatable whether or not he used his his axe to attack someone. Um, the, there's blood on the dagger. Now this is probably from for, from his intruder, from the, uh, his attacker. Um, when the Iceman was recovered, his hand was found firmly gripping the, um, the the flint dagger, which is significant as a, 